Hi everyone, it's Mike here again, and it is great to share with you a preview of our latest Moonshots Master series. This series is where we collect all the wisdom that we've learned from over 140 plus shows. And what we do is we study a particular topic and we bring all the best clips and practices together so you get your own little masterclass. And what you'll get in each of the Moonshots Master Series is a show dedicated to your personal transformation or perhaps to problem solving, decision making, thinking better, all that kind of good stuff. Or lastly, it will be about leadership. Those are the three big buckets that all the Moonshots thinking fits into personal transformation, thinking better, and leadership. That's right. And we pick all of those great clips from superstars, entrepreneurs, and authors and wrap it all up together. Now, you're only getting a preview of this. If you'd like to listen to the full show, get all the tools and all the goodies that comes with the Moonshots Master Series, visit moonshots.io, click on the members area and sign up. Be our patron. It's only a dollar a week and you'll get a complete masterclass just for you every single month. So head over to moonshots.io and become a member. But for now, enjoy the show. And welcome to the Moonshots Master Series. It's episode six. I'm your co-host, Mike Parsons. And as always, I'm joined by the man with a plan, Mr. Mark Pearson Freeland. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, Mike. What an exciting day for you and I and all of our members and subscribers to get into a brand new episode of the Master Series. What a perfect day. It is a perfect day and it is so good to do this for our members and subscribers only. And boy, are they going to get what I would have to call the real deal today, the real masterclass, the essential, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's right. Today is a comprehensive, deep dive into the art of communication, which Mike, I mean, our members and subscribers, they're going to be pretty happy because the next 90 minutes is full of you and I breaking down the importance, the frustrations, as well as tips and tricks on how to be the best communicators out there. And how important is that nowadays in all of the work that you and I and all of our listeners and the working world do nowadays? How important is communication? Um, and particularly because it's uh, in so many different channels, isn't it? Is, it? is it text? Is it email? Is it in a document? Is it on a conference call? Was it, heaven forbid, we're in the same room together? Like communication is of the essence. I mean, how much do we talk about? Have we communicated that? Do, do Does that partner, does that client, does that person understand, you know, do they get it? Are they on board? And another way of saying it is, are they aligned? Are they like, do they really understand? Like, it's like a constant theme every single day in, in work, right? It's a constant theme that not only can create a lot of confidence in what you're doing, it'll, it'll cre- lead to better projects, it'll lead to more alignment. But I think in the times, Mike, and we'll talk about this lots today as well, in the times in my career when projects have gone a little bit maybe sideways or haven't moved at a quick enough pace, The reason for that, more often than not, is because of misalignment. It's because of Mm. a lack of good communication that's then led to maybe one or more parties going down different paths. And then what happens is you don't realize it until it's too late that you're already, you know, maybe two or three turns away from one another. And then you've got to figure out how to get back. And all of that could have been avoided by just having that better communication right at the start. Totally. And, and listen, communicating is hard because, you know, we get so much information, so many notifications, so many messages every single day that we're all, uh, uh, running ad blockers. I mean, you know, think about this, Mark, the, the recent iPhone launch from Apple, they're like, guess what? We've got this like super powered, do not disturb mode. Now, isn't it funny that that's like one of their key features of their product, that it's going to block out all the things it's enabling? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the irony is dripping here, but the reality is our attention 
is sought after by so much technology, so many different uh, media touch points that we are, we're in a fight to put our attention and energy into the right place. And we're in a fight to make sure that we communicate clearly to those around us. So we have got an action packed show. I mean, we've got the greatest football and soccer manager in history talking about communication. We've got stories uh, about presidents and communication. We have one of our Moonshot's favorites. We've got Cal Newport ahead in the show. And we even have one of our all-time heavyweights, Mr. Simon Sinek. So much in front of us, Mark, uh, to dive into a complete masterclass in the world of communication. Where do you want to start? Well, as our existing members and subscribers will recognize, we like to break these comprehensive deep dives down into a number of different parts. And this first part that we like to spend some time on is really helping inspire all of us to understand the importance as well as the art of communication. So Mike, I think where we should start is exactly that. Let's build up a foundation and let's get ourselves inspired around the idea of communicating correctly. And now this first clip we've got is from Sharon Ellison. And Sharon Ellison does a great breakdown on how you and I and our members and subscribers can identify if sometimes we're being a little bit defensive. Because I think as we're going to hear from the clip, there are a number of patterns that we will break down and go into when we're being that little bit defensive in our communication. So let's hear from Sharon Ellison about the six patterns of defensive communication. You know, it's interesting for people to begin to identify when they're, uh, when they are, uh, defensive often after taking one, one, an initial class on non-defensive communication, people will, <clears throat> um, say, wow, I'm even more defensive than I ever knew. Our defenses fall into three categories, I think, just like in war, where we can surrender, we can withdraw, or we can counterattack. And when we surrender, there's, but I think there's a passive and an aggressive way to do it. So when I, sur when we surrender, if we do it passively, it's like the codependent person. So if you find yourself always justifying what, um, well, my tired is, my child is crying because, or fussing because he's tired or, um, you know, my partner or my spouse uh, spoke to me harshly because she's had a hard day at work. Um, so if we're constantly justifying other people's mistreatment of us or their, their behavior when it's, when it's rude or inconsiderate, then we're probably in that, um, surrender betray. The other one is surrender sabotage. And there's at least a dozen ways to do that. Um, I might be nice to your face and talk about you behind your back. So I'm acting friendly to you, but I'm sabotaging you. Um, I might make a commitment to do something and not follow through. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways um, that I might go along with an idea and not criticize it until later, but you had no idea that I had any issues with it. Um, so um, that's the surrender sabotage. And then with withdraw, some people really don't like conflict. They can be dynamic people and very active in their communities, but they want to avoid conflict at all costs. So that's the withdraw escape where I just, I, I leave the room or I don't bring up the topic at all. And then there's withdraw and trap. And that's this one. So I'm just sitting there with a very sullen, frozen stare. Um, I can do this in a meeting and it has a huge impact in the room. I call it a, the energy sucker. I can uh, do it at home. And if somebody says, what's the matter? I go, I'm fine. And then if they say, well, you don't look fine to me. I go, you know, I was just fine till you started bugging me. So I withdraw, but then I get mad at you if you try to engage me. And then the last one is counterattack. And sometimes I counterattack to justify and explain my own position or to blame you. So if you can kind of begin to get those six patterns in mind, sometimes it's easier first to watch other people and see which one you think they're doing. Um, so that's, that would be the, probably the simplest thorough way I can talk about the different defensive modes.